Okay, good morning class. Uh, welcome back. A short recap of what was done in the previous class. We had begun with the fourth chapter that is migration. Uh, we had done the meaning of migration and the causes, the four different causes of migration and we had finished off till push factor and push, sorry, pull factor and push factor of migration. Now today we are going to begin with the second topic that is different types of migration. Now what are the different types of migration? There are various different types of migration. We are going to learn a few. Now the first different type of migration is immigration and emigration. First one immigration on page number 37. Immigration is the process of people coming in from elsewhere into another country to settle. All right. So please focus on the words coming in and into another country. That means a person who is migrating is coming inside or coming into a country from some other place. All right. That is immigration starting with I. Another one is emigration. That is when a person is moving out of the country, it is known as emigration. Now, whenever there is a question like define immigration or emigration or what is the difference between immigration and emigration, please support your answers with examples. All right. So it shows that you have understood properly. For example, immigration starting with I immigration. If the question is define immigration. So what you have to write is in your own words, you can write. You don't have to write whatever is written in the book. You can write when a person is moving into a country from another country, it is known as immigration. For example, a person from Bangladesh migrating into India for job purpose of for various other purposes, it is known as immigration. All right. So that means the person is coming inside the country. The second type of immigration, sorry, the second type of migration is emigration, just the opposite. Meaning when a person is moving out of the country, for example, from India to USA or UK, it is known as emigration. So you are migrating from India to USA. All right. Okay. That is emigration. Now, a person or when a person is involved in immigration, the person is known as immigrant, meaning when a person is involved in immigration, starting with I, then the person is known as an immigrant. If the person is involved in emigration, then the person is known as an emigrant. So immigration and emigration is the process and the person or the individual who is involved in immigration or emigration, all right, is known as an immigrant and an emigrant, all right. Okay. Now, second type of migration is from the rural to the urban areas. Okay. Now, what do you mean by uh, rural to urban areas? When a person migrates from the rural areas like the villages to towns and cities in the, to the urban areas, it is known as or it involves rural to urban migration. All right. Okay. Next one, urban to rural, meaning when a person migrates from the towns and cities to rural areas or to villages, it is known as rural to urban migration. Now, what are the reasons? Why do you think people will migrate from the rural area to the urban area? Now, for example, rural to urban migration is most of the time involved when people go to towns and cities looking for jobs. So it is always for economic reasons that people migrate from the rural areas to the urban areas. Now, why is or how is urban 
to rural migration taking place why is it taking place now the reason is people have worked for so many years in the cities now they are fed up of the lifestyle that is in the cities they are tired all right now they want to live a peaceful life where the pollution is less where noise pollution pollution is less where air pollution is less so what do these people do is they migrate back to the villages or they go and li live a retired life in the villages so when this takes place it is known as rural sorry urban to rural migration all right and another example is when people in towns and cities when in urban areas want to set up factories all right now because of the increasing population now we learned about population in the previous chapter because of the increasing population in the urban areas there is scarcity of space you don't have enough space so whenever industries are built when factories are built you require a very large space you require a very large space a boundary so what happens is you have enough space in the villages compared to the urban areas so these people migrate to the urban areas to set up factories all right so this involves migration from urban areas to rural areas okay now the next one is some other types of migration all right intercontinental migration simple when a person migrates from one continent to another it is known as intercontinental migration now how many continents are there you must be knowing asia africa america all right australia the antarctica so from asia so from if a person migrates from india which is in asia all right to any european country all right or any or to america or to any african country or to australia that means you are migrating from one continent to other continent so it is known as intercontinental so two or more continents are involved now the other one is intra i n t r a intracontinental migration means you are moving from one place to another one country to another country within the same continent for example if a person migrates from india to south korea both are in asia both are in the same continent all right the reasons may be many factors all right but here we are only discussing about intracontinental so if you are migrating from one country to another inside the same continent it is known as intracontinental migration okay now the next one is regional or internal migration now sometimes people migrate from one place to another within the same region or within the same country understood so when it is internal migration that means you are migrating from one place to another within the same region or within the same country it is known as internal migration or regional migration now the third one that is in page number 39 forced or involuntary migration now what do you mean by forced migration you know people are moving but here the reason is given forced what do you mean by forced that means you are migrating from one place to another or you are moving from one place to another not because you want to not it is not your own idea or not because of your own wish you do not wish to move but something is forcing you to move it may be a natural force all right or an unnatural force for example suppose you stay in a place where there is frequent occurrence of landslides or floods or earthquakes or volcanic eruption takes place that means what happen what happens is you do not want to live in such place where there is some danger or risk to your life so you are forced 
you unwillingly you are forced to migrate from that place to some other place all right so for example this type of migration is when the government or authorities of a place force people to migrate for a reason so what is the reason it may be a natural calamity or it may be some unnatural reasons like war when you are when there is a civil war and you when there are communal clashes and the government or the authorities ask a certain group of people to move out of that place and go and settle in some other place all right okay the last one is return migration now what does the word return means it means you are coming back all right it's not return back return the word return means coming back when you write coming then you can write back you should not write return back return itself means coming back all right so when 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 we are talking about return migration we are talking about those individuals all right those individuals who were living at place a had migrated to place b for various reasons all right now for example if somebody's parents had migrated to dubai or to australia or to kuwait to earn all right to earn so that they would be able to give a better lifestyle to their children all right so when the children are in school or are dependent on the parents the parents are working in that place in some foreign land but afterwards what happens is the reason for the migration or the goal for the migration has been achieved meaning those children have completed their education and have started earning on their own they are no longer dependent on their parents so now the reason for migration is complete the goal has been reached so what happens is that person he returns to his original place all right so this type of migration is known as return migration now in your book it it is given this type of migration involves the voluntary return of migrants to their original place originally they are living in place a but they have migrated to place b it may be a foreign country it may be within the same country like people migrating to delhi bangalore metropolitan cities so that they can look after their children and give a better lifestyle and now when the goal has been reached they come back to their own place okay often young people who move into the cities to work return home when they retire and when they retire after retirement they come back home to spend the rest of their lives in the quiet of their towns and with old friends and families now remember yesterday we had done the first causes all right the causes in one of the causes it was the second point was social migration all right so this social migration it says moving to be closer to family and friends all right so this and return migration is similar that means you are moving all right you are moving back to the place you actually belong to all right okay now we have come to the now we have come to the next point now we'll be starting okay different types of migration we've done around four for some other types of migration and we've done two that is a uh, rural to urban and emigration and emigration and urban to rural three main points three main types and four some other types of migration all right